Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today we're back with, as promised, two more store visits. Last time around, we visited uh, two comic book stores in Portland, Maine. Now, on that same trip, as I mentioned, we went to a destination wedding to a, a random barn in the middle of nowhere, and um, we went to those two comic stores in Portland on the way up. On the way back, however, we stopped at two more comic book stores. The first one is called Dot Com Comics, and that is in um, Freeport, Maine. So we'll go to that one first, and then we'll go to Stairway to Heaven Comics. And that comic book store uh, is in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I got a bunch of stuff at both stores, both really cool stores, very different stores. Um, and I was able to get footage inside both of those stores. So let me show you the footage first uh, from Freeport. We got some outside the store. We got some inside the store. Okay, they have a bunch of cool stuff here. As you can see, they have a ton of keys. Now, this is a comic book store. is actually the physical location from an online store that you may be familiar with. Back in the day, I used to see these banners all the time for, for Sell My Comics. Uh, and or something like that, yeah, sell your comics, whatever. There's this, they had this yellow banner appear all over the internet, and nowadays they do all their stuff through eBay, but they have this uh, physical location, as you can see, tons of keys. They had like two Luke Cage's number ones. They had all sorts of first appearances and key superhero issues. No romance. Yeah, and uh, so none of the four comic book stores that I went to on this trip had any romance. But I did get a few things. Some of them had Archie, so I, I got a couple Archie things. But I did buy a couple things, a couple unusual purchases for me, because I did buy some superhero books on this trip. And that's because I'm still working on putting together my complete run of Doctor Strange, Strange Tales, and I picked up two of these. I think pretty good prices, actually. Strange Tales 120 with a very early X-Men crossover. This one's got the Human Torch meets the Iceman. So it's an early Iceman appearance. This one was um, $15. It's lower grade, but very solid. This is issue 120 of Strange Tales. Then 132 this one I paid a little more for, but it's also in nicer condition. It's um, uh, 132 I paid $20 for this. And this is... Um, it's got Doctor Strange blurb on the cover. So at 120 we still weren't really seeing Doctor Strange in the cover. By 132 we're seeing more and more of him... Uh, and then, of course, just a couple issues later, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s going to take over. We're going to start to get Doctor Strange alternating covers with S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, but these were very exciting for me. Uh, I only need a few more of these. Um, but I'm missing a couple big ones, 111 and 114. Um, I got a couple other things out of... Uh, first of all, it's free comic book day. Um, and so I got... Um, uh, issue of Avengers. I, you know, Avengers used to be my favorite superhero title. Now I don't buy it at all because Bendis happened and I don't really trust Marvel anymore. Um, but it was free, so we got that. We also got something called Dungeon. Dungeon is back, and um, I like these DD sort of inspired comics. So, again, free, we'll give it a try. And then finally, the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Comics Free Comic Book Day. I've had gotten some cool stuff and read some cool articles in previous editions of this. So that was cool. Um, but I also bought some stuff out of the dollar bins. Uh, here's a 10 cent Dell. It's a boy, a horse, and a dog. It's Rusty Riley. No idea what this is. But again, it was only a dollar and it has some great art on the back cover. Now, I know from issues of Lassie uh, that have um, Matt Baker art that the artist on the back cover, the story just continues onto the back cover. So the art on the inside is from the same artist. It's really cool. I don't recognize it, but I thought the art was neat. So for a dollar, it was worth it. I got one issue of Archie at Riverdale High. It's number 78. Uh, and then I also got this so this is something i was thinking of my pal metarog when i got this it does have a price on it although the price is crossed out so i don't know if it was uh a souvenir or if it was um a freebie or what but it's called wonders of washington 
past and present, and it's about Washington State. You can see Seattle here, some kind of ship that apparently landed in, in Washington a long time ago. And so this is the sort of um, interesting sort of like giveaway or informational comic that I find really interesting. Again, I don't really collect them like um, like Metarog does, but um, whenever I see oddities like this, especially for only a dollar, I, I got to pick them up because it's just so weird. Um, so anyway, that's uh, .com Comics, great place, um, really cool. Certainly recommend going there uh, if you're in Freeport. And Freeport is like a, a town that's filled with um, shops. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not discount shops, but um, oh, I just blanked on it. It doesn't matter. Um, they have a lot of shops there. It's also where the LL Bean 24 hour headquarters is. So you can go there. Um, so great store. Um, was not expecting it to be great, but it was really good. Um, but it actually wasn't as great as Stairway to Heaven. Let's put Stairway to Heaven up on the map. Um, and I've got some footage that I filmed on the inside. This place is, is really terrific. So let me, let me put that up and then I'll come back and, and tell you about it. Um, so this place is absolutely great. It's huge. They've got tons of, tons of, uh, stuff for kids is what I really appreciate. They have whole giant sections of graphic novels and kid friendly comics, um, of all a, like all sorts of stuff. They do have, um, newer back issues in the front of the store. They have older back issues in the back of the store. Just tons of variety. They have a whole room for manga, but they also have what they call the dollar dungeon, which is a giant room that's all dollar books. And it's actually organized uh, by publisher and alphabetically within the publishers. And they've got like a hundred boxes, um, all sorts of crazy stuff. Marvel, like 30 boxes of Marvels, 30 boxes of DCs, tons and tons of books. And then all, like a whole wall of image, uh, a whole section of Vertigo, and then indie publishers, small press, just tons of stuff in the dollar bins. So I got some really wackadoodle books here that I'm pretty excited about. Um, there's a couple books that I paid more than a dollar for, and I'll show you those up front. Uh, actually, let me start with the free comic book day. Here is um, a free comic book day arch issue. Here's something called Solo Leveling, which um, looks like some kind of anime thing, but also has to do with um, MMOs or something. So I thought I'd give that a try for free. Big purchase of the day that I was super excited to get it's for only $3, it's Archie at Riverdale High, number one. Um, this is a series I've mentioned before I'm collecting. It ran for like 114 issues, so long run. None of the issues are worth anything except to a very specific few Cheryl Blossom collectors that are that are looking for certain issues. But um, for just $3, I got the first issue now. So now I've got, I think, issues one through six. I've got most of the early ones, um, and, I'm, and I'm getting close Um uh, you're going to see a bunch more of these in a second. And basically what's been happening is I didn't have my checklist, but I'm like, eh, I still need a lot of these and they're only a dollar each. But it turns out I bought like 10 doubles. Um, in fact, I think I, I don't think I even have them in a the stack anymore. I already chucked them somewhere because they were all duplicates. Um, but here's issue one. The other book that I spent a couple dollars on uh, was, I already have this, but it's another copy of um, the new Teen Titans 21 it is the first appearance of Night Force, which is the free insert comic. I think it's also the first appearance um, of Brother Blood, who's on the cover here. And so this is sort of a double minor key. Um, I keep having this idea that Night Force is at some point going to be done, something to be done with it. If it was a Marvel property, Night Force would be a shoe in because it's got a great high concept and is really interesting. Um, I don't know if DC, you know, they're obviously not nearly as put together as Marvel. So I don't know if they'll ever get around to doing justice by night force, but just have this idea in the back of my head. So this is like a long-term speculation shot in the dark. Um, when I see these, I pick them up cheap. Another one to do that with is Legion of Superheroes. I forget what issue it is. 294. Maybe it's the first appearance of Amethyst. That's one. If you see it cheap. You know, it's, it just feels like something they should do something with. Um, here's Archie at Riverdale Hall, high number 19, dollar book. Here comes some of the dollar books. Wait till you see some of the stuff I got in here. Uh, Eclipse Monthly featuring Rio. I've got another issue of this somewhere, and the Rio strip is really good. 
So um, for a dollar, I had to pick that up. Um, and then we got uh, a recent um, issue uh, of Gunhawks. So I have a complete run of the Gunhawk series from the early 70s, but I saw this in the dollar bin, had to pick it up. Um, a couple issues of Archie that I already have. Now, you'll remember the video that I did about um, modern Archie variants to watch out for, right? Well, I actually found one at the store. It was $8, and it's a book that's worth about 15 It was the really cool EC homage for uh, this issue, 646. So the, the variant cover has the cool um, EC weird science homage. I almost bought it, but since, I don't know... If it had been three or four dollars like these other books, I would have. But for eight, eh, I just didn't feel like there was enough meat on the bone. But in the dollar bins, I found these six forty six, six forty eight, um, not in great condition. But these are the regular covers, and I have the variants already. So I just got these um, just so I could have the regular versions as well in my collection. Uh, Maggie the Cat number two. I have a complete run of John Sable, but I've never read any of the Maggie the Cat. Um, spinoffs. This is um, much later. You can see it's from Image, so it's much later than the first comics run. Uh, so I'll be curious to dig into that. I'm not really a big fan of Maggie the Cat, but for a dollar, we'll check it out. Um, uh, pick this up on a whim. Mighty Crusaders number eight. I didn't even realize this series lasted that long. I thought it only got to issue like five. Um, I, but it's possible in the same sentence, it's possible I already have this because I do have a number of issues of this. But this... Um, the uh, Archie superhero revival from the early 80s that was done by Rich Buckler uh, is um, something that I pick up uh, when I can. Um, and I've got most of them at this point. Um, dollar Bin, it's Slain the Berserker, number one. Probably not my thing. I don't tend to love the um, British uh, comics. But it was a dollar. Again, it was a dollar. And then here, I'm going to show you for a dollar, I picked up um, an issue of Warlord, which of course I already have because I have a complete run of Warlord. But let me, and this one has some writing on the cover, but let me give you my weirdest speculation tip of all time. Complete shot in the dark, but this is the origin of Atlantis. And I have a strong feeling um, that we're going to be seeing more of this content and Warlord in particular in Aquaman 2. I think they set up um, a trip to Scar Taurus and a, and a Warlord appearance. If you watch Aquaman 1 and you've read Warlord, there's a bunch of stuff in there that suggests that they're going to go here. And in the DC Universe, it's actually Warlord that has most of the, the stuff about Atlantis. Um, all the background stuff more so than Aquaman was set up in, in the pages of Warlord, strangely enough. And this is the origin of Atlantis. So for a dollar, even with the writing on it, I figured, what the heck. Um, and then here's the really weird stuff that I got, because they had a lot of weird stuff. It's Wolfman Comics number three, The Tree of Life. Um, I got something called Man Frog number two. I love these like increasingly crappy self-published small press things from the late 70s and, and mainly the early to mid 80s. And here's one that looks like someone just like printed in their house and it's UCI Earth. Check this, like, this, this guy with the little tiny severed head on a hook. And then in the back, there's like... Um, You can see like Captain America's shield and it's supposed to be Wolverine's hand or something, I guess. But like, it's just so badly done that I love it. I love that someone had the passion to, to spend their money to print this, even though it was, shouldn't have been printed. But then finally, I can't believe I found this. It's Tales of Wonder number one. Now, if you've watched my video about my least key issues in my collection, my 25 least key books, you'll see that right near the top, is Tales of Wonder number three. And this is a series where someone is doing a Jack Kirby, Stanley, early 60s Marvel homage version of the Bible. And so everything is these like, like Kirby-esque 
totally overwrought drama and like all the language from the like the Mary Marvel Martian Society and the Stanley Hyperbole, but they're telling like the stories from Genesis. It's such a crazy mashup that doesn't make any sense to anybody except the creator. And um, when, that issue three is one of my prized possessions because it's just inexplicable in the most wonderful way. So when I saw issue one, I had to get it. I never thought I'd see another issue of this series. Um, I think, I, well, there's clearly a number two somewhere. I think there might be a number four, but um, just fantastic. So anyway, I can't, I can't recommend this place highly enough. Stairway to Heaven Comics. It's in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's just a couple minutes off of the interstate. So if you're going... If you're going up 95, you have to go through Portsmouth. You can jump off and you're there in five minutes and uh, absolutely worth stopping at. Great, great store. So that's it for this time. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.